Hey folks, in this video we're going to be talking about a reference electrode shunt. This video is based off of an advanced EIS webinar conducted by my colleague Neil Spinner. If you're interested in future webinars by Pine Research, check out pineresearch.com to stay tuned for more upcoming webinars. This video is broken up into several sections. First, we will talk about what is a reference electrode shunt. We will then discuss why you would use a shunt. We will then provide examples of Bode and Nyquist plots, both with and without a shunt. And lastly, we'll talk about a few instances where you might not want to use a shunt. Timestamps are in the description below. Before we begin, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. What is a reference electrode shunt? So it is a tool that is used to augment and improve the impedance data when particularly a reference electrode is used that can introduce what is known as usually artifacts or errors because of high impedance of the reference electrode. And so the shunt helps alleviate that problem. So if you imagine a three electrode system, for example, with a working counter and a reference electrode, normally you'll just connect your potentiostat leads to each of these electrodes and run your experiments and then everything is great. Okay, so the addition of a shunt is on the reference electrode side. So instead of connecting directly to the reference electrode, what we do is we add a conductive metal wire, which is often platinum, but doesn't necessarily have to be, in series with a capacitor. And typically the capacitor is somewhere in the picofarad to nanofarad range. So I'm just showing, for example, a 100 picofarad capacitor. The combination of this platinum wire and capacitor in series is the shunt. And so the implementation of a shunt is where you put it in parallel with the reference electrode and you connect both of these things to the potentiostat's reference line. Okay. So that's what a shunt is. So how does it work and why? A reference electrode, particularly one with a frit, something like a silver chloride or a calomel reference electrode, is going to have some kind of fixed impedance. Let's say typical impedance of a reference electrode, maybe something like 100 ohms to a kilo ohm or 10 kilo ohms, something in this range. The impedance in my shunt, however, in, is, is essentially the sum of the impedance of this capacitor and this wire. Well, the wire doesn't have very much impedance at all. It's just a very conductive metal wire, but the capacitor has an impedance that is inversely proportionate to the frequency. So at high frequency, the, the impedance is lower, and at low frequency, the impedance is higher. So for example, numerically, a 100 picofarad capacitor has an impedance of 1.6 kilo ohms at a megahertz. And as I go down in order of magnitude, my impedance goes up in order of magnitude. So for example, if I have my reference electrode with an impedance of about five kilo ohms, let's just say, what this means is that at any moment, the potentiostat is going to use the path of least resistance or impedance in the reference line. So at one megahertz, five kilo ohms here, 1.6 kilo ohms here, it means that the potentiostat is going to sense through this capacitor because it has a lower resistance or a lower impedance. And so at this high frequency, where my reference electrode, and I'll show you data in a moment to illustrate this, my reference electrode is causing these artifacts, let's say, or these errors, I'm bypassing that. And I'm using this platinum wire, actually, as sort of a pseudo reference. As the frequency drops, however, let's say to 100 kilohertz in this particular example, now my impedance at the capacitor and the shunt side is 16 kilo ohms. It's five here. The potentiostat will revert to measuring the reference electrode as normal. So here's some example data to kind of show you that. And this is an example data set that I had taken on a system some time ago. Here's the Nyquist plot impedance data. Now, if you're familiar with impedance data, this looks relatively normal. I have a semicircle. I have a you know, diffusional tail, something kind of normal-ish looking, I suppose. But if you notice, the intercept of the x-axis 
over here is at minus about a minus 100 ohms. Well, if you're familiar with impedance at all, you know that this doesn't really make any sense. There's, there's really no such thing as negative 100 ohms. That's like creating energy from nothing. Um, so this is where this artifact kind of comes into play here. It's, it's, there's this negative semicircle, if you will. What I did was apply a 100 picofarad shunt. And the interesting thing is that there's still a few points here at high frequency, clearly that are a little bit, uh, some kind of error, some kind of artifact. But overall, you can see that the intercept is now in positive you know, Z real territory and the semicircle is shrunk a little. Um, and I've effectively gotten rid of that high frequency error. You can see the comparison of these two on the same plot here from black to red, I've used a shunt that I've, you know, I've corrected, perhaps still a little bit of error in the highest frequency points. You can see from, from the blue to the purple, or for example, from the red to the yellow. Um, maybe a, a few points in the beginning are still ha have some error, but basically I've corrected for that issue that my reference electrode was causing me. And then eventually the points relatively you know, accurately within some measurement error coincide for the mid to low frequency range. So now the last point to make about this, which may occur to some people, is that if, if I have this situation where my reference electrode is causing problems at high frequency and using this platinum wire basically fixes it, why don't I just use the platinum wire for the whole experiment? Why do I even bother with this shunt? I can just use this platinum wire and then I won't have any problems, right? I won't have any of that kind of artifact from that frit. I'll have this pseudo reference, but you know, no big deal, right? Okay, well that's, so I just wanted to propose this as a possibility because this might occur to somebody. And some of you may have experience at least with non-aqueous uh, solutions or, or electrochemistry or, or other things like this. You may kind of already know the answer to why a pseudo reference electrode is not a, a great idea, but I'll illustrate that for you now. So here's a different, different cell, a different situation, a set of data here. Overall, you see a pretty normal looking, you know, Randall's element, semicircle, Nyquist plot. At high frequency though, there was this artifact. Now in this case, the artifact is like a, a, a semicircle, not quite completing, but if it completed, it would probably go into the negative, you know, Z real um, area. So clearly, you know, not, uh, the best data here for at the highest frequency. So in this case, instead of using a shunt, I used just a platinum wire as the reference. And you can see the highest frequency here, there's no hot, you know, tail going into negative um, area. So, so for the most part, it feels, oh, I fixed that problem. Similarly to before, at least for the most part, I've, I've, I've adjusted for that. But you can see that overall, my Nyquist plot looks a little different here. Comparing the two, black to red, you can see that the now the Nyquist plot has gotten bigger. It's 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 definitely different. It's definitely shifted. And you can see that the comparison of, for example, from blue to purple, purple's, you know, fixed the high frequency, but now purple's deviating at mid to low frequency. And so really this is the answer to that question, which was somewhat rhetorical, which, you know, why wouldn't I use my platinum wire as a pseudo reference for the whole thing? Well, it's because it fixes high frequency, but ruins low frequency. And sometimes you have to use a pseudo reference electrode if it's like a non-aqueous system or something like that. And sometimes when you have a pseudo reference electrode, that's why you want to limit your low frequency range because at low frequencies, the test takes longer, both for that frequency and for overall, the, the overall test itself. And when it takes longer, it has more time to sit there. And when it has more time to sit there, it can drift and drift causes error in the data. And so basically the shunt is the best of both worlds. I'm, I'm fixing the high frequency portion, but I'm allowing the mid to low frequency to still rely on that stable reference couple to give me accurate data. As you could tell from this video, using the shunt or not can have a major impact on your EIS data. As a result, we recommend a little bit of trial and error depending on which electrochemical system that you're using. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.